As a ball handler, Jalen Brown is a really interesting player. Having the ability to make ridiculous plays like this. But then also make plays like this. So in this video, we're going to do a deep dive on Mr. Brown's film and try to figure out why he's such an inconsistent ball handler. Now in preparation for this video, I looked at every single one of Jalen Brown's isolations from his most recent playoff stint. And I think we should start things off by first looking at Jalen's biggest strengths off the dribble. Now first and foremost, Jalen really likes to attack with his right hand. And if you watch a lot of Celtics games, this is probably something you already know. But Jalen is way more than just your typical straight line driver. When getting to his dominant hand, Brown is really good at using his feet to build momentum and set up blow buys. Watch him here pound the ball with his right hand and he immediately skips off his right foot. And this allows him to load up to then explode off his left foot and push himself downhill. You'll see him hit the exact same move here, where he pounds the ball with his right hand, skips off his right foot, and explodes off his left to push himself downhill. So that right hand blow by is pretty much Jalen's primary threat when he's playing off the dribble. But he's able to use that right hand attack to set up other counters. One of his favorite moves is getting to a left to right between and skipping out like we previously saw, but then he plants his outside foot, getting to a shifty change of direction. Now to his credit, Brown has a lot of variations to this move. Right here you'll again see him plant his outside foot, but now he's going to creep his opposite foot up for a right to left between. And Jalen also does a great job of setting these moves up. There's times where he'll play with the ball going back and forth like he does here. Or he'll throw out some punchy moves to get the defense off balance. But overall, Brown is pretty much always getting to a right hand blow by or a right hand change of direction. So like we just saw, when Jalen's going right he's pretty much always attacking the basket. However when Brown's going left, he's almost exclusively pulling up. Now for righties, it is easier to shoot going towards your non-dominant hand. But from what I saw, I think Jalen is uncomfortable attacking the deep paint with his left hand. And this makes him pretty predictable once he makes his initial move. Because as soon as Jalen attacks to his left, it's pretty much a guarantee that he's trying to separate for a pull-up. One thing Brown always does when he drives left is hit the brakes and spin over his left shoulder for a jumper. Right here you'll see Brown cross the ball over and again skip off his right foot to then drive off his left foot and replant his right for the crossover. But you'll notice when he attacks how PJ Tucker is going to sink into gap to close off this drive. But Brown is going to keep his dribble alive and turn over his left shoulder for an and one jumper. Now Jalen can for sure find plenty of success with the bag of moves that he currently has. But when playoff time comes, teams have plenty of time to scout and pick up on a player's tendencies. And I think that really has an effect on Brown's postseason play. Take this play for example. We have JB coming down and isolating against PJ Tucker. You'll see Brown make a nice move loading up and getting to a shifty between the legs. But notice how PJ just sits on Brown's right hand, not even attempting to cut off his left. And when Jalen again spins over his left shoulder, Tucker is there waiting for him, which leads to a turnover. Now here we'll again see Jalen initially attack to his left, and watch Trey Young shift over and help, expecting Brown to come back to his right. And when he does spin back, Trey's in perfect position, but he gets called for a questionable foul. Now with all that said, I think the biggest factor to Jalen Brown's ball security is how much space the defense gives him. If JB's man gives him a big cushion on an island, Brown's got enough skill to cook pretty much anyone. And notice on all these clips how Jalen's attacking to his left. And that's because there's no physicality or hand checking on the perimeter. Like here, notice how Tobias Harris gives Brown a ton of space to size him up. And that allows Jalen to get to a routine right to left cross to explode downhill. And you'll see the same thing on this play. The defense gives Brown space, allowing him to play at his own pace and comfortably get into his bag. However, when the defense eats up Brown's space and pressures him, that's when all his issues really begin to get exposed. Now the first issue Jalen has is that he's not great at protecting the ball with his body. When you watch JB play, you'll notice how he always gets back tapped, and that's because he plays extremely upright. 
and he doesn't use his outside shoulder to create a gap between the ball and his man, which allows the defense to calmly get around him and make plays on the ball. Right here, notice how Jalen just comes off the screen, and he doesn't get physical with Butler at all, allowing Jimmy to easily come around him and poke the ball free. And all this gets exposed when Jalen's playing against smaller backcourt players. Again, Brown's not great at protecting the ball with his body, so smaller defenders can easily get underneath him and force him to cough it up. Beyond the three, you can tell Brown is primarily comfortable with squaring up to attack the defense. But Jalen's a 6'6 wing, and it's not always ideal for him to try to mix up smaller guards off the dribble in isolation. But even if Jalen's going up against bigger defenders, he still has issues dealing with pressure and physical defense. Like on this play, you'll see when George Niang gives Brown a little contact with his forearm, how that's enough to make Jalen uncomfortable, causing him to lose the ball. Now we previously saw that when Jalen has space, he's more than comfortable making a simple right to left crossover and attacking downhill. However, if the defense comes out to pressure Jalen, he looks like a completely different player. Notice here how Bam Adebayo just simply steps up and gets himself inside of Brown's frame. And again, when Jalen's space is crowded, the ball almost always gets away from him. So when we watch these clips, it's pretty obvious that Brown needs to improve his ball control. But I still think a big underlying problem with Jalen's turnovers is that he calmly makes the wrong reads in isolation, and he always carelessly exposes the ball. Watch on this play how PJ Tucker is going to close out to Brown with his hands low, but Jalen decides to get to a low rip, exposing the ball right in front of Tucker. I also think Brown's strength and stability needs to improve too. Now Jalen's strength definitely carries over defensively and in other parts of his game, but specifically with his handle, there's always plays like this where he's attacking and he completely loses his footing. And from what I see when Jalen's handling the ball, he is a guy that can easily get pushed around and moved off his spot. Now with all that said, Jalen Brown is still a big time scorer and overall player. And still being just 26 years old, he still has plenty of time to improve this part of his game. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments who the kids should break down next. The kids here.